So we're talking about evidence for the existence of God. And one of the things that atheists love to say, you say to them, God exists, and they say, do you have any, do you have any evidence to back that claim up? And it seems, when they're saying that, that it's sincere. That they literally, honestly believe that there is no evidence for God's existence. None. I talked in the earlier things about, uh, you know, they, they compare it to belief in aliens. Another comparison they'll make all the time is like, you don't believe in zombies. You know, why not? There's just as much evidence for the existence of zombies as there is for God. And they seem to honestly believe that this is true. They live in the same country I live in. And they seem to honestly believe that there is as little evidence for God's existence as there is for zombies. Now, one of the things I've said time and time again, prior to me becoming a Christian, it, 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 the curiosity about whether there was a God or not started to really, really consume me. I started to get really, really interested in the, in the fact. Started to investigate. Started to really care somewhere in my early 20s. Is there a God? Now, one of the reasons prior to my becoming a Christian, I actually started to just move from agnostic to, yeah, there probably is a God, was just simply based on the evidence. Simply based on the evidence available to me. Common everyday things. I'll give you an example. I was... I read the play Long Day's Journey Into Night. I was supposed to study the play in college. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's a very good play. There are many people who consider it one of the best plays of American, of the American theater, of American literature. There, there are numerous people who would put it in the top ten. Excellent play. So I'm reading this play, and there's a key moment towards the end of the play where the main character, Edmund, starts talking to his father, and he starts going, you know, you told me some of your memories. Let me tell you some of mine. Starts describing this experience where he's on the ship, and he says, and for a minute, I actually lost myself. I actually lost my life in the beautiful singing rhythm of it all. I became a part of something bigger, of life itself, of God, if you want to call it that. Then he goes on to explain, uh, I'm paraphrasing it a little, I don't remember the exact lines, but that's pretty close. Then he goes on to say, and it happened to me one more time, it was like a saint's vision of beatitude. It's like a saint's vision of beatitude, his words. Exact words. It was as if the unseen hand had pulled back the veil, and for a minute you see. And seeing the secret are the secret. For a minute there is meaning. Then the hand, the veil goes back, and you back, drift back into the fog. Something like that, etc., etc. Now, at the time, I was a 22 year old, sort of an agnostic. That particular passage powerfully witnessed to me that in fact there was a God. Here is basically an autobiographical play considered one of the masterpieces of the American theater and I'm studying it for college and here right towards the end seems to be what is clearly a spiritual experience being described by the playwright himself. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because that very experience that's described in the play quite well, quite beautifully actually, is a common occurrence. It is common to people all across the world in hundreds of different faiths. It's something that happens all the time. You yourself, if you want to see powerful evidence of the existence of God, I tell you right, right now, I don't care where you live, any town USA, go any town USA, go to any diner in the middle of your town or any Starbucks anywhere in the country. Ask 10 people if they believe in God. Three of them will tell you, yes, I, I firmly believe in God. Ask those people why. Ask them if they ever had an experience like that. And they will tell you quite clearly that they did. It will be remarkably similar. How do I know this? Because this happened to my sister. Not a religious person. I was not raised Christian. I was raised sort of Catholic, but it was, you know, a Christmas and Easter Catholic. It was completely meaningless to, to, meaningless to me, and it was meaningless to my family for the most part. My father went to church a little more regularly than everybody else. The rest of us basically ignored it, and that was perfectly fine with my mother. So I wasn't necessarily raised Christian or as, as a believer in any way, shape, or form. Neither was my sister. 
secular person, Upper West Side, Manhattan. But she described almost the exact same experience, almost the exact same experience. She said she just had given birth to her first child, and she's sitting on a beach looking at her child, and she said this feeling of love and peace came over her. And for a minute she felt like, you know, the universe made sense, and this feeling of, of, of there, is something, there is something real that put us here, or there's some sort of mysterious connection to the whole, all of a sudden she felt this, this spiritual experience. It's a common, everyday occurrence. One of the favorite phrases of atheists, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Yeah, that may be true. But spiritual experiences like that are not extraordinary. They are as common as grass. That's why I say, go to any town USA, anywhere in the country, you'll find three or four people who can give you a variation of that experience. And they'll promise you that it was somehow God. So ask them, do you believe in God? They'll say yes. You go, why? Did you ever have any sort of, you know, mystical experience? And they'll tell you some variation on that. They'll say, well, there was one time when I was driving and I, you know, I swear to this day it was God. I swear to, the and they'll give you a variation of that experience, a common everyday occurrence. You tell me there's no evidence for God. And I point to one of the landmark pieces of, less, of, of um, the American stage. And right as the centerpiece of the, of, the, of, the, of the drama, a central piece of the drama is the guy has some sort of spiritual experience where he discovers something relatively close to God. But there's no evidence for this God, right? This is common. This happens all the time. You ask me for evidence of zombies. I have never in my life heard anybody say that they have ever had an encounter with a zombie. Had I heard 30 or 40 testimonies of people I know well, would I believe in zombies? I'd be agnostic, to tell you the truth. There's no way I'd be an atheist about zombies. There's no way I'd say, if, if people's experiences were, were with zombies paralleled the experiences of people in just my own country with God, if there were, if I could go to anywhere in the country and find, you know, zombie worship centers, and people who told me anywhere in the country that they had experience with zombies. I would doubt, but I wouldn't be sure. I wouldn't be sure. I brought this up before, you know. Use zombies as the analogy. I brought it up with aliens. Did you watch the Oscars on Sunday night? Viola Davis uh, goes into a spiel about how God brought her all the glory and God put her to where I don't I didn't really listen didn't really watch to tell you the truth but it happens every single time you watch an award show every single time you watch a football game every single thing that you do in this country culture is to one degree or another suffused through with spirituality everywhere you turn but yet there's no evidence of God are you sure you're not just shutting out the evidence are you sure you're not just shutting it out of your heart and invalidating it? Are you certain? Because that's what it seems like to me. It seems like the evidence is powerful and overwhelming and daily. And you just don't want it to be so. Because the play I'm describing is not some uniquely religious play. It's not even considered necessarily a spiritual piece. I just happened to notice because I was very, very curious about God. And when I was reading, I was like, hey, wait a minute. This sounds exactly like this guy had an experience that he, wherein he became sort of a believer in God. So then you say to me, well, you don't believe in Zeus. Well, I'm not necessarily saying that the variations make complete sense. But there is a common thread to these experiences. And these experiences happen to people all over the world and they've been happening since the beginning of time till today. Is it really no evidence is all I'm saying. Is it really lack of evidence? For real? Is that honest? Because I don't think it is. Honestly. I think it's evidence that you want to throw out. Because it, sh it, it conflicts with, with a worldview. Let's look at the experiences throughout history. Uh, matter of fact, let me introduce another, another point. Uh, very quickly, in brief. You've heard of, 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 let's say, Mozart. A musician, a genius musician. 
Now, one of the things that I will submit to you is that a genius musician experiences life different than you and I. They probably resonate differently to sound. They hear sounds differently than we do. They probably hear more in sounds than we do. They're more sensitive to music. Someone like Mozart, if you walked into a room and you turned on a radio, you would hear one thing and Mozart would be hearing a completely different thing. He would be more correct. What he would be hearing would be more what it actually is. But he would be attuned to variations. He would be attuned to different vibrations and different meat resonances in the sounds themselves. He would be more sensitive to sound. That would be part of the nature of his genius, why he could become what he is. Where am I going with this? Kind of obvious. You, the atheist, are not a spiritual person in the slightest. In the slightest. But it dev did it ever occur to you at all that people who have spiritual experiences are just tuned in better? They are just more gifted at discerning something which is actually there. They are hearing different frequencies than you can hear. The things they are experiences are really there, but they are more sensitive to them just by the nature of the people they are. That really, honest to God, never occurred to you. That you, they are, they are not making up something that didn't happen so they can, you know, whatever, fool their friends and family but they are actually experiencing something deeply that really does happen that you yourself are not tuned into because they have different sensitivities they vibrate on a different playing field they they hear things that you don't and they feel things that you don't did that honest to god never occur to you because that's the god's honest truth that is really what's going on when I tell you in all sincerity that God is as real to me as the ocean, as real to me as my right arm, I am not making up an imaginary friend. I am not inventing a unicorn in my backyard that I want to play with and I want to convince you of. Why do I want to convince you of? I would care less if it was a fantasy. I'm telling you something that is deeply real because it's completely true. Faith is not a belief in anything. Faith in its truest sense is an intuitive knowing, an intuitive knowing response of something that is really actually there. That is why I cannot be dissuaded because I know it's really there. I know that God is really there and I am just tuned into him and you are not. I am just paying attention to his movements and you are not. I am listening and you aren't that is the difference between you and me that is why i cannot be dis dissuaded from my belief in god because it is as real to me as the ocean it's not that i'm dogmatic or rigid in my thinking i'm probably less rigid than you are i'm less dogmatic than a lot of atheists i know not a very dogmatic person at all not even rigid this isn't about how you live your life i could care less as long as you don't hurt me i'm cool with you not even a republican I'm not even a Republican. I'm a Democrat. Don't care about prayer in school or any of that jazz. But the thing I am telling you is the truth. The God I am responding to actually lives. The God that I am responding to is real. And you can't see him. But if you, sh if you humble your heart and you look for him, you can know him too.